Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Midgard Musings today and watching today's video. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel, as you may or may not already know. If this is your first time, I appreciate your support. For everybody else who's already supported Midgard Musings through your views, comments, likes, and subscriptions, thank you very much. I want to call to attention the fact that I am actively and aggressively seeking 2,000 subscribers by or before January 1st, 2020. All right, that means that we need to get at least three new subscribers every day until then, and your help is greatly appreciated. I couldn't do this, well, I could do this if it wasn't for each and every one of you, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun because I would just be talking to nobody. All right, so everybody's participation and involvement on this channel is greatly appreciated. I invite you to please write down here, see it, right down there, please click that subscribe button you don't want to miss any videos here on this channel be sure to click the bell notifications because then you will get notified every time that I upload new content all right guys I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's support and I look forward to learning new things with each and every one of you about Norse heathenry Germanic paganism all that kind of fun stuff so please become a subscriber today that button is right down here it costs you literally nothing to become a subscriber and then if you want to be notified just click the bell for notifications it's all right if you don't but it is appreciated if you do check the description down below for all the other ways that you can support Midgard Musings through Facebook Patreon Teespring Redbubble uh, anything else that you see down there click on the links follow them see if it's something that fits you I appreciate all your support let's jump in to today's video hail and thank you all Hail everybody and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today on another installment of the Bragi's Corner storytelling series. All right, I haven't done a whole lot in this series of the channel, uh, at least as of recent. Um, trying to you know fill in some things from subscriber requests, viewer re requests, supporter requests, everybody that's here that asks me to upload certain things about certain subjects. I try to focus on that more than anything, and I greatly appreciate all the feedback. But um, I wanted to do a special Bragi's Corner episode. This is a storytelling series um, where I'll either recite stories uh, of the lore or I'll either give my own spin on it. But today is going to be a special one because today I'm going to be reading from a very, very unique and uh, special source uh, from... Uh, a gift that was given to me by somebody who I will uh, leave anonymous, um, but he is my brother. And if anybody who watches my channel knows that I do not have a blood brother, um, I have a I have a sister, <laughs> uh, but as far as blood siblings go, I do not have a brother. But this gentleman uh, who I'm referring to, who gave me this as a birthday gift uh, a couple of weeks ago, was or just this past week rather. Uh, he is my brother, and he is one of the very few who I will call brother and who has earned that title with me. And I am going to be reading to you guys today from this book, uh, which again is a gift from him, um, and it's called Asgard Stories. Um, it's a Foster and Cummings uh, a public publication from the Silver Burdett and Company. And the reason why this is something that is so very special and unique, I'm going to show you guys is look at the date uh, of this copyright, if you guys will be able to see it. Um, I can't tell if you're able to see it, but I'm going to tell you right now, this was copyrighted in 1901, so this book is 118 years old. All right, This, has, this was given to me as a gift from my brother, uh, so thank you very much, Dingo. You know who you are. Um, the, uh, and this is something that has been uh, in his family for many many years and I'm, I'm honored to have been gifted this and I wanted to kind of reintroduce the Bragi's Corner uh, series with one of my favorite stories from the lore. Um, this is the story of Thor and Loki going to visit the giant Utgard Loki. Um, so the name of the story in this book is Thor's Wonderful Journey. So uh, without further ado, Let's go ahead and get into Thor's wonderful journey to the giant, the Jotun Utgard Loki. One morning, Thor asked Loki, the fire god, if he would like to go forth with him to Utgard 
the stronghold of the giants, where he was going to try with his mighty hammer to conquer those fierce enemies of Asgard. Loki was glad to go with him, and the two gods started forth in Thor's chariot, drawn by two goats. Thor often went on a journey, so the dwellers in Asgard did not wonder to see him getting ready for a long drive. As Thor and Loki drove along, the heavy chariot rattled and made the thunder echo among the hills. People in our world, down below in Midgard, heard the rumbling and said, What a heavy thunderstorm! How the thunder crashes and rumbles! Toward evening, the travelers stopped at a peasant's hut, and Thor, alighting from his chariot, went to the door of the house to ask shelter for the night. I will gladly give you a room, but I have no food in the house, said the man who opened the door. Oh, never mind that, said Thor. I will pro provide the food. So Thor and Loki stopped for the night at the peasant's hut. They found the family within, the man, his wife, and two children, a boy and a girl. All looked on in great surprise to see Thor kill his two goats and cook them for the evening meal. Eat all you wish of the meat, said Thor. But be careful not to break any of the bones. Throw them all into the two skins which I have spread upon the floor. Now the boy, whose name was Thialfi, wondered why Thor should say this. And as he happened to have a piece of the leg bone, he thought there could be no harm in breaking it open to get out the soft marrow to eat. Thor was just then talking to Loki and did not notice what had been done. But next morning, the boy learned a lesson that he never forgot. When Thor was ready to start out again, next day he held his magic hammer over the skins in which lay the bones. All at once the goats became whole again and stood there just the same as before, except that one of them limped with his hind leg. Then the young Thialfi knew why Thor had told him not to break the bones. At first, when he saw Thor's angry face and how he grasped his hammer, the boy was frightened and wanted to run away. But soon he remembered it would be too cowardly to do that. And so he went to Thor and asked his forgiveness. Now the mighty thunder god, though often angry, was always just and kind. After scolding the boy as he deserved, he freely forgave him and said that he and his sister might go along with Loki and himself on their journey. Lesson learned. When Thor tells you to do something, you best pay attention. And then the four started off. After saying goodbye to the peasant and his wife, leaving in their charge the chariot and goats, for it seemed best to finish the journey on foot. At nightfall they entered a thick forest, through which they wandered on for miles, when all at once they came upon a house and a strange-looking house it was. The wide front door opened into a big room. At the left was a small room, and just opposite the front door were four long, narrow rooms. The travelers wondered to find, wondered to find a house in the depths of the forest, but they were glad to have shelter for the sight, or excuse me, for the night, and all lay down for a good rest. Soon after midnight, they were awakened by groans and strange sounds, and the earth began to tremble. Thor sent his companions into the farthest room, grasped his hammer, and stood on guard by the door. At daybreak, he started forth to find out what had caused the noise. He had not gone far when he came upon a huge giant lying on the ground asleep, and Thor found that he was making the earth tremble with his snoring which must have been the sound they had heard in the night. While Thor was looking at the giant, he awoke and spoke to the god. Ho, ho! I think you, little fellow, must be Thor, of whom I have often heard, but really I did not think you were quite so small. Now the sun is up, and I must be off, but where is my other glove? Oh, here it is, on the ground. And the giant stooped, and picked up his glove, which was the very house in which four, our four travelers had spent the night. 
with the big front door where the hand went in, and thumb for the one-sided rooms, and the four narrow finger rooms opposite the door. If you are going my way, you may come along with me, said the giant. So they journeyed together for one day, but even mighty Thor could hardly keep up with the giant's long strides. When night came, the giant stopped under a large oak tree and said, I am going to sleep. You may eat your supper if you wish. Here is a bag full of things. Saying this, he fell asleep and was soon snoring. But when Thor tried to open the bag of food, he could not untie the cord. This made him angry. For the giant had tied up their food with his own. He looked at the huge figure lying before him asleep. And when he thought what a mean trick the giant had played upon them, Thor seized the magic hammer and threw it at him. Did a leaf fall on me? said the giant sleepily. Have you eaten your supper yet? Well, I'm going to sleep again. And soon he was snoring louder than before. Thor grasped his hammer tighter than ever and threw it with such strength that it seemed as though it must surely have killed the giant. But again, he rubbed his eyes and said, I thought an acorn fell on my head. He had hardly spoken when he was asleep again. Then a third time Thor hurled his hammer with all his strength, and it seemed to hit his enemy in the forehead, and was buried out of sight. But the giant only said, I think there must be birds overhead in this tree. I thought a feather dropped down on me. Are you awake, Thor? I think we'd better be going I think we'd better be going along with our journey, and if you are bound to go to Utgard, I will show you the way. But I advise you to go home instead. You will find bigger fellows than I. And Uthor had made up his mind to go on, and nothing could make him change. At noontime, the four friends left their giant guide, whose path led another way. They had not traveled far when Thor spied a large city looming up before them, and soon they came to Utgard, the home of the fierce giants. Although it was surrounded by high walls, Thor and his friends were able to creep through the bars of the great gate. When they came to the palace and found its doors open, they went in, and there sat all the giants with their king, Utgard Loki, at their head. A quite different Loki was this giant king from the mischievous fire god, the Loki from Asgard, who now stood before him. Upon seeing the four strangers, the king of the giants said, Why, this must be the god Thor. I really did not suppose that you were such a little fellow, Thor, but probably you are stronger than you look. Now before you sit down at our table, you must each show some proof of your strength. Then Loki, who was very hungry, said he was sure he could eat more than anyone else. So the king called one of the giants to come forth, saying to Loki, If you can indeed eat more than any one of my men, you will perform a great feat. A huge trough full of meat was brought in, and Loki began eating at one end while the giant began at the other. They reached the center together, but Loki had eaten only the meat, while the giant had devoured meat, bones, trough, and all. The Alfie, the peasant boy, took his turn next, and boasted that he was the fastest runner of them all. Oh, said the king, it will be a most wonderful feat if you can win a race against any of my men. The first time Thialfi ran the course, he kept ahead until near the end, and was beaten by only a few yards. The second time, he came off worse, and the third time, he was only halfway around when the giant had reached the goal. Thor, however, was not at all cast down by the failure of the others, and he prepared to try a drinking match. So the king brought forth a long drinking horn, saying, My men usually empty this in one drop. But if you are very thirsty, or if they are very thirsty, uh, though sometimes they have... Uh, to make it in two swallows or even three. So then Thor put his lips to the drinking horn and took one long deep pull thinking he had uh, surely emptied it but to his surprise the water had lowered only a few inches. Again he lifted the horn feeling sure he could empty it this time yet he did no better than before. The king said you have left a great deal for your last drink. This made Thor try his very best, but it was of no use. 
he simply could not empty the horn. So you are not as strong as you seemed, after all. Do you care to try anything else? said the king of the giants in a mocking tone. Oh, certainly anything you like, replied Thor. Well, said the king, I will give you something easy this time, since I see you are not as strong as I expected. You may try to lift this cat from the floor. It would be more child's play for one of my men. Thor put out his hand to lift the cat, but he couldn't raise only one paw, though he used all his strength. Well, it is no more than I expected, said the king. You boast of your strength, but you do not show it to me. By this time, Thor was getting very angry, and he spoke fiercely, I will challenge any one of you to fight with me. The king looked about the hall to find someone small enough to wrestle with Thor. Then he said, all my men are too large. I shall have to send one of the women. Soon, a bent old woman came hobbling in, and Thor thought it would be nothing to overcome her. But the longer they wrestled, the stronger the, woman be the old woman became, and at last when it was plain that she was going to win, and Thor had been thrown down upon the floor, the king called for them to stop. Thor and his friends were then invited to sit down at the feast, and the next morning, after a great breakfast, they started on their journey homeward. Utgard Loki, the giant king, went with them to the, great, uh, to the city gate, and when he was about to leave them, said, Do you find it as easy as you expected to overthrow the giants? No, said Thor, who was too honest to hide his shame. I am vexed that I have done so little, and I know that after this failure you will all laugh at my weakness. No, indeed, replied the king since you are now well outside our stronghold. I will tell you the truth about what you saw there, and I will take good care not to let you get in again. You have greatly surprised us all, for we did not dream that you were so strong, and I have had to use magic to hold out against you. When you met the first giant in the forest, you would have killed him with your hammer if he had not put a mountain between himself and you. Loki was a wonderful eater, but we matched him against fire, and who can devour more than fire? The boy was a swift runner, and I had to make him race against thought in order to beat him. What can be swifter than thought? The horn from which you drank was the ocean, and you took such a mighty draft that the people in Midgard saw the tide ebb. It was really not a cat you tried to lift, but the Midgard serpent and you pulled him so far that we feared he would let go his hold. Then you wrestled with old age, and who is there that can overcome old age? With these words the giant king vanished, and Thor, upon looking around, saw the city of Uthgard was also gone. Then silently, but with many thoughts of these strange things, Thor and Loki, with the boy and girl, made their way back to Asgard. Well, all right, friends. There we have the story of Thor's wonderful journey uh, with Loki and Thialfi and his sister to Uthgard Loki and the things that Thor uh, kind of battled with uh, during this time. His pride was attacked. You know, he is the greatest champion of the gods. He is the strongest of the gods. And there were things that even he himself were unable to achieve and accomplish when faced with uh, during his time, uh, you know, in front of Uthgard Loki. So it's a wonderful story. I think it's a great, you know, lessons uh, to be learned in that uh, no matter how strong you think you are, no matter how great you think you are, there is always something out there greater and stronger and better than you. Don't be so proud. Don't be so cocky. Don't be so overly confident that you think you are the only one out there who can accomplish these things. There are things greater than you. There are things outside of your abilities. Um, so just do the best that you can. You know, be, be the best that you can be, um, but realize that there is and are uh, things out there that are better than you uh, and in various ways. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you always strive for your best. You always strive for your greatest. Um, but we will never achieve 
all the time. Don't let those times kind of be your, you know, don't let that, those, those occasions, don't let them be the thing that defines your overall abilities. Always strive for greatness, always strive for the absolute best, um, and learn from those instances where you may be bested. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video of uh, this episode of Broggy's Corner. Thank you again to my good friend and brother Dingo for the amazing book that I was able to read from. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Um, right now, as of today, we are only 11 subscribers away from hitting the 2,000 subscriber milestone. So I would expect and hope that by this time next week, we will have already been able to celebrate 2,000 subscribers. So thank you all again so much for your ongoing support with Midgard Musings here, uh, watching the videos, commenting on the videos, sharing them, giving them the thumbs up, all that fun stuff is great and offers a lot of feedback to me, you know, so I can see what to, what to kind of, you know, build the channel from and all this kind of fun stuff. So thank you all for your support. Thank you again. Hail, and I will see you all in next week's video.